What do you call a data analyst in California? A data scientist. <laughs> do you kind of know where you want to like fall now on your career? Obviously, I want to make as much money as possible. You and every other master's student. <laughs> what would a data scientist do with a data set that a data analyst won't? Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining the Road to Six Figure Data Science Show with Richard. Today, we're on episode seven, and we're just going to be talking about the job search and questions around the data science career that Richard has. I was wondering what kind of projects should I aim for to put on my resume that would be useful when I do apply for jobs. I mean, I know I'm doing that one project for interview career right now. This is useful experience to just be in Python, cleaning data in Pandas, SQL, and other software. But yeah. like just topic wise for projects, what makes me more competitive? Is there like things I could push for right now that would be valuable to put my resume? Oh yeah, this is a common like subject, I think. The issue is that the projects that you do, if you do them in class versus in work, that framing of like it being a project for work definitely matters a little bit more, even if it's the same project than if it were like a project framed around school, mainly just because like they want to know that you can succeed in like a business context, even if the internship is like a sham. Obviously ours isn't, but like, you know, some people just make up internships and stuff like, and yeah, it's like, yeah. they make up value that they added. I think the big mistake a lot of people do is they do like machine learning projects and internships and such, or maybe at school and they expect to then apply for machine learning jobs but that job inherently requires you to have a lot of experience with building engineering systems, which doesn't really come from school. And then a lot of the like junior level machine learning roles are really coveted. So there's a lot of demand there. It's like either like a master's student or like maybe even a PhD student or someone with a lot of internship experience gets those jobs as junior machine learning engineers. And there's just not a lot of them. It's interesting, right? Because there's a lot of machine learning projects out there in school that are the most popular, but then people like then try to pivot into the job sector and they realize, oh, this isn't really going to help me for the job. So if you think about like the most popular jobs out there, probably like data analysis jobs, then it means doing a lot more data analysis projects potentially now to prepare yourself for those data analysis type jobs or interviews or uh, positions. That's my recommendation. But yeah, it depends on what kind of like job you want to go for, I guess. If you're looking for, you know, not doing data analyst type jobs or like data scientist type jobs, then do machine learning projects, I guess, essentially. Okay, I guess to take a step back, data scientist is such a broad blanket position title. I mean, what is the real separation between like a data analyst and a data scientist? I remember you told me a joke once, like about a year ago, you were like, what's the difference between a data analyst and a data scientist? And the punchline was $50,000. So, yeah. <laughs> what, what, like, what like, do you call a data analyst in California? data scientist. That's the second joke. <laughs> I kind of get what you're going for, what you're getting at, but what, what distinguishes between a data scientist, right? To me, that's like all the analytics stuff I'm doing, like prediction, modeling. I mean, even that one project I'm working for interview query, just understanding what a data set could answer. What would a data scientist do with a data set that a data analyst won't? I think there's a lot of videos on this already. My personal opinion is that data scientists maybe focus more on like solving for bigger projects that require more scope in terms of the data work that then require business value versus data analysts have like maybe a tighter scope in terms of just reporting and like analyzing the data and like maybe not moving the data from like SQL to like Python and then doing much of machine learning on it. But obviously, because it's becoming so easy, it's obviously something that data analysts can do. But yeah, I mean, titles are just kind of stupid in some sense, because they really do determine like how much you're going to make and your seniority. If you think about it as data analysts as being like less senior than a data scientist, then you would then kind of say, Say, you know, these could be like the same position. But I do think like data scientists at startups probably are defined as just the people that work on everything data related. Whereas once you get to bigger companies, then they have like formal definitions that they place and they might be tied to salary. They might be tied to like a specific role that you have to do, but it's not really like concrete across the board and it's not similar. 
and it's not always the same. I would just say that data scientists, yeah, they really do make more money. So then they are deemed to be more senior and have more knowledge around data versus like a data analyst. So if you have data scientists and data analysts at a company, then together, you'd probably have some like differentiation between like what the data scientists work on and what the data analysts work on. And it's pretty clear what the data analysts work on at that point. But data scientists might be more than a specifically working on machine learning or maybe specifically working within a business sector or like doing some of that modeling section and stuff that you're talking about as well. But usually I think some companies will either have like data scientists or data analysts. If it's one or the other, then usually they're just doing the same job. But if they have both jobs at the company, then you could be pretty sure that like the data science role is going to be maybe more like ML and coding heavy than like the data analyst one. I see. So it seems to me it's just how much the company wants to pay for these type of you know roles. How much they want to pay? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, that's one part of it. I think the other one is just like startups that want to hire someone who like needs to do a little bit of everything data related, we'll call it data scientists, right? I mean, the best way to say it is like, if you have like a key metric for everyone to kind of like succeed in, in the first 90 days, that's like the easiest way to define these positions. For a data analyst, many times that would be something like either some setting up some sort of reporting structure that doesn't exist yet, or maybe even like providing insight to make some future product planning decisions or something like that. So support some product manager, maybe. I feel like data scientists have more concrete goals because they are more expensive. So then if you're bringing in that higher, you have more of an idea of like what this person's going to do. Mm, I see. Do you kind of know where you want to like fall now on your career? Or I where mean, you in, my, in my career, obviously I want to make as much money as possible. Um, yeah, you and every other master's student. I mean, yeah, I mean, why else am I doing this master's degree? I mean, to me, I am more interested in the modeling side of it. Taking some of the classes I'm taking now, I'm not super confident in kind of understanding some of the really deep math that goes on behind the scene, like, you know, linear algebra, vector analysis, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But with all these pre-built packages, model, scikit-learn, um, PyTorch, TensorFlow, all of those packages, like what level of understanding do I actually need to use it? Like, I know what a mean squared error is or how to compare the fit of a model or confusion matrix, like all this kind of basic measure of a model, like that stuff I know. So to answer your question, I want to go for more the modeling side of things. You know, I think I find that- Modeling side doesn't really exist, I would say. What is the modeling side? Because when you say like a job, Sometimes I feel like it's hard because people don't have a good idea of what that means. Like they say like what the work they want to do, but they don't like translate it into like what kind of value it really adds at the end of the day in terms of like moving some sort of metric up. So like what kind of problem do you want to solve is maybe a better question than like, what do you want to do day to day, right? Because in my opinion, I think the modeling part is going away pretty fast just with all these different tools and stuff. And like everyone does the modeling part in school so then they're all trained to be like oh this is the fun part and then they realize that it just doesn't really come up that much at work because it's being uh, outsourced to these like bigger pre-built models so it's like you don't even need to do the modeling part or you need extreme like you know math fundamentals and like you need to be working within PyTorch or TensorFlow to like do this the certain modeling part I don't know like you're doing a project right now for any query and you haven't even gotten to the modeling portion of it yet no, so like don't expect that someone's going to be like cleaning your data for you and then suddenly you, they hand it off to you to do the modeling part right no I understand like, a majority yeah. of the job is the cleaning transformation you know yeah uh, are you okay with that of course I mean yeah and oh, I think okay, that's okay. the that's the fundamental part of being someone who works with data, right? You need to yeah. know how to manipulate the data, transform it the way you want. I mean, the analysis part is really a small portion of the work. It's the gathering data, making sure you have a high quality data set. I mean, the phrase I keep hearing is garbage in, garbage out, right? Like the quality of the data you have really does matter. So yeah, it does. Uh, and yeah. so if we talk about this a little bit more specifically then, so what problem are you trying to solve then? But don't say modeling because I don't think modeling is a good example of like what you might be doing. Are you just talking about like literally building models and then giving them to a machine learning engineer as like what you want to do? I guess I don't know what's out there then. I mean, I, I want that to be part of my job. I know I want to work with data. You want to work with data, but what do you want to do when you work with the data? Be able to, you know, drive the business in a certain direction that adds value. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a very broad blanket statement. I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> 
Like, what if we just want you to build a bunch of ETL pipelines? Cause that's like the biggest value of business value that you can give us. You know, I mean, that's, that might be true, right? I think this is a problem for a lot of people where they don't really know what position they want to start applying for. They kind of blindly apply. And then once they just get like an interview, they try to decide if they want to like continue to go for that role or how to like prepare for it. But if you find like the most exciting part, let's say being given a problem to, let's say, build a recommendation engine or to build a model for this app or for this feature, right? Like maybe that's like your ideal role. Is that what you're saying? Is yeah, you're saying? Okay. something I would definitely be interested in. Yes. Gotcha. Then that's kind of where most people are thinking like, okay, I'll be a data scientist and that's basically going to be my job. And that'll be like what most of my work is. Realistically, you know, a lot of it probably will be more things around pipeline building and like getting the data to the right spot and stuff like that. And more maybe data analysis. But at your stage right now, it might just be helpful to start lightly job searching for stuff that you think you want to apply to. And then just looking at those roles to see what they actually value for like skill set and and like what's required as well. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think all the things that you're saying is true. Like the ETL portion of the job or getting data to the right spot, that is a core fundamental skill. It seems like a data scientist really encompasses position of like a data engineer, data analyst, all of that together, put in one broad title. Like, I think school is just mainly teaching me about the modeling part, the modeling side, the analysis, you know, the mathematical fundamentals, but all of these other like tasks that you have to do before you can model is a majority of the job, but a smaller part of the degree program. Yeah. Academia just will lack behind what the industry trend is going to be for the most part by at least like a few years. That being said, there's no data engineering master's program right now. Not that I really know of. I think there are kind of like segments now and people are starting to build them out, but I don't I don't really see that being a big part of it. But yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think that that is kind of what also causes a lot of people to have this like maybe this false understanding of what the data science job is. I'm just browsing through a few job descriptions right now. A lot of it just says like either analyzing data and creating like statistical models potentially, but most of it is like on building out a lot of the data pipelines to set up these like machine learning algorithms because once you build it like let's say your model right you then have to like deploy a lot of this stuff in production at least with the ml engineers and a lot of that will require data engineering as a function of machine learning so that you can like get your data ready into the right format because you have to do that live and stuff like that so that's one example use case but in my opinion i mean yeah i think it's really hard to say like what the actual job is going to be until you like start interviewing and you get somewhere and you understand like what success means for that specific job it just helps to like continually be more aware of what the job market is like and what kind of positions you should apply to what kind of like roles you should be looking out for so that you're prepared for it not just like right after you graduate and then you're like oh i need a job but like literally slowly educating yourself because once you actually get there it's going to be a lot more difficult i think in terms of making that transition really fast versus kind of like doing it slowly at school into that job searching mode and understanding, oh, this is what industry wants. This is what industry needs. Stuff like that. Sounds good. I think it would be worth it to just start looking at jobs now. I think it really sounds like for the current internship experience to get that data transformation, other data engineering experience to be able to add it to my resume and make myself seem more valuable and attractive to these future companies. You think it'd be helpful to get that experience right now? I mean, like, yeah, because I don't think I really had much in my previous role. Really, I mean, I started doing much of my work in Python and other coding languages towards the end of my last job in you know, starting school. So yeah. I think having a longer experience working with coding and all of that would certainly be better. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. There's not a lot of entry-level data science jobs right now. I'm looking on Indeed. It's like nothing. That's yeah, crazy. I mean, the job market's kind of down, right? I literally see like four. One's at the FAA. The pay <laughs> is 50K to 78K a year. I mean, that's that's kind of tough. Also, another tip is that I heard that California, maybe Washington too, a couple of these states now require all job postings to have salary ranges. So it's opening up a lot more insight into like actual salaries of these positions mm -hmm. and in terms of like what you're realistically going to expect. So if you search for any job in California, it actually now tells you the range. Like machine learning engineer, university graduate for TikTok, 2023 start, it highlights PhD. So 126000 to $250,000 a year. So that's what you would make as a PhD graduate entry level. If I look at the rest of this, I mean, they're all PhD. 
actually. Yeah, there's not a lot that I see entry level at this point. Yeah, I'm hoping that'll recover by the end of the year when I'm ready to really go full steam ahead on job applications. Yeah, I mean, it will recover, but not by that much. So I think that's where kind of like getting a sense of the job market is helpful now, right? Because if you want to approach it from like the, let me try for like a data analyst job that will then segue into data science job strategy, which I recommend to most people, then I think that's probably more likely at this point versus if you try for like the data scientist entry level jobs, that one will be much harder just given like what I'm seeing right now. Because like if there's only like three jobs out there right now, by December, there's not going to be like 3,000. If it goes back up, it'll be like 20 versus three. Even though it's 20, that's actually pretty rough too. Yeah. Let's say 10X is 30. Right. That's still really tough. So I think everyone has these like unrealistic expectations in terms of getting these entry level data scientist jobs, because unless these companies automatically start hiring, there's a huge boom. I don't know. I, I mean, I really recommend this data analyst route or the data engineering route in terms of like really? getting a job. How long would you recommend to stay in such a role then before trying to move on to like an actual data scientist? Well, I mean, most people will let you move in the actual job itself. So for them to retain you, let's say you work as a data analyst and then they're like, oh, actually, I want to be a data scientist now. I have my one to two years of experience so I can start looking for data science jobs and get more callbacks. Then a lot of the companies will actually move you into a data scientist role internally because you already have that two years of experience and you're probably much more advantaged. But yeah, I mean, I'd say one to two years. You should probably start looking for like data science jobs at that point, whatever that means. Don't you think that my current role as a data science intern for interview query will open up maybe more data science positions? Yeah, potentially. But then at the same time, there's still only like three data science jobs, (laughs) entry level data science jobs right now. You'll be competing against every other person who has a data science internship somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, Unless you can showcase that you can like jump in and start doing stuff right away, which you might be able to if you keep on doing our internship and (laughs) building out these pipelines and other stuff that I'm giving you right? As projects. Yeah, definitely. I'll try to keep doing that. Yeah. But again, I think you said you had a pretty full class load until end of December, right? So like you were going to do like, like I explained for the summer quarter is compressed. So a normal semester is 16 weeks, the summer semester is only 11 weeks. So I'm taking Uh, still the three class load that I'm planning to take. So three classes for the summer. So that's 11 weeks. And then in the fall, that's when I take my like capstone class and i need one additional class so in the fall i only have the capstone and one more class so that's only two classes and for the capstone i'll probably do something with interview query so i'll probably have a lot more time for interview query and that's when i'm planning to turn it up on job searching and beefing up my resume and all that okay yeah yeah so you'll have like a three month period maybe four month period where you'll be more like almost full-time internship and you'll get more of those project experience maybe not full-time internship but definitely like more internship experience at that point yeah that's what i plan to do that's good that's good yeah i mean dude it's it is a tough market out there right now i think the main thing is that like as we're slowly seeing the job market recover most people don't want to hire entry-level people right because they have to train them up and historically the people that hire the most entry-level roles were these like bigger tech companies like fang companies right right and once they stopped hiring people they realize now they only want senior people right because they would used to like they used to have a lot of internships or university grad programs so that they could retain talent for cheap it's an advantage right to basically get an intern and then you can convert them to a full-time person but now that they're not hiring it's much harder to have these like programs with new grads i mean i still think it's like totally doable i just think that the methods to get there are like not what some people want to do it discourages a lot of people then because it's like they came in with the idea of getting a data science job right after college but realistically it's like any other kind of thing where you have to like kind of work your way up to maybe this job by potentially joining as like an entry-level data engineer or entry-level data analyst i guarantee you if i type in entry-level data engineer it's gonna be way more jobs i'm looking at it right now yeah there's definitely a lot more at least ju- junior data engineer yeah there's gonna be more of those i see data engineer one yeah there's a lot of jobs here okay All right. Anything else? No, not for this session. I think we hit on a lot of the topics I was curious about. Okay, sweet. All right. Let's wrap it up. We'll see you guys next time.